We've already talked about the Clapeyron equation. The Clausius-Clapeyron equation is a sort of uh, specialized version of the Clapeyron equation. And it's only valid for cases where we're forming uh, a vapor phase. And specifically, it's going to be cases where the vapor that we form can be uh, can be treated as an ideal gas. So let's go ahead and, and draw those transitions. So we could be subliming, or we could be forming, uh, or we could be forming a vapor. We could be vaporizing. Um, we're going to make an approximation that delta V for the transition is approximately the molar volume of gas. Now, delta V for the transition is going to be, now this is normally TRS, it's the standard abbreviation. Uh, delta V for the transition is the molar volume of gas minus the molar volume of the condensed phase, that is the liquid or the solid. Typically, the molar volume of gas will be a lot less. Notice that uh, the molar volume of gas will be much bigger than the others. That won't be true if we're up here, so we can't use this up here. So I'll just put a little no here. Okay, We can't use the clausius clapeyron equation near the critical point. And we're also going to say that the more volume of gas is approximately equal to RT over P. And of course that's the ideal gas law. And so that means we can't use this if we are at a high pressure. So I'll just put at very high so typically we use this for, you know, maybe a few atmospheres or even lower. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and derive this clausius clapeyron equation. And when we derive this, we say that um, we'll start off with a clapeyron equation. So we start off with saying dp dt is equal to uh, delta s for the transition over uh, delta uh, uh, delta V. And then we make the approximation that delta V of the transition is the more volume of gas. So let's go ahead and change the delta S to delta H of the transition over T. And remember we're going to replace the more volume of gas with just RT over P. So we have T, we've got RT, got P and we've got the delta H for the transition. So the transition could be sublimation or vaporization. Okay, now if we're going to integrate this, we've got to get all the variables, um, uh, we've got to get one variable on one side and the other variable on the other. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just rewrite what we had on the previous page. So we had delta H of the transition and the pressure. Okay, so to integrate this, we have to put T on one side and P on the other. So we'll put P on the left-hand side. So we have dP over P. And we're going to have delta H. Oh, that's supposed to be delta H, not delta R. Delta H over R. And then we're going to have 1 over T squared dt. Okay, so we've separated the variables and we're going to integrate. And before we integrate, let's go ahead and realize what we're integrating from. What we're going to do, just to redraw the phase diagram really quickly, is we're going to take, say, a normal boiling temperature and say what happens to that boiling temperature if I go to some new, if I go to some new uh, uh, pressure. So if I raise the pressure this amount, how much does the um, if I if I raise the pressure that amount, how much does the boiling temperature go up? So what we're really doing is we're integrating from T1 to T2, and we're integrating from P1 to P2. And really, when we do this, at least the first time, we got to label this. This is T1 P1, and this is T2 P2. 
And I can't emphasize this enough that we, we need to you know, we need to realize that we need to take the limits of the integral and make those correspond to points on this diagram so we understand exactly what it is that we're doing. Okay, let's go ahead and do the integral. Notice that I've already taken the h out. So we've made an assumption here. So let's go ahead and explicitly state that we're assuming assuming that's constant. So if we do this over a really big temperature range, that approximation is going to start to break down. Okay? So we need to realize that we need to add that to the list of assumptions that we're making. So, so far we're assuming the gas is ideal, the more volume of gas is much more than the more volume of condensed phase, and now delta H of the transition, whether it's vaporization or sublimation, is constant. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and do the integral. So we've got the log of pressure, and we're and you're gonna, we're going to evaluate that at P2 and at P1. And the other side, we've got this integral. So let's go ahead and write delta H over R. And we have, uh, we're going to evaluate at T2 and T1. And the integral of, of 1 over uh, T squared is negative 1 over T. And we can, we can pull out the negative sign, pull that out, put it over here. Uh, and that will give us the log of P2 over P1 is equal to negative delta H of transition over R, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. And that is the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. Notice that it's great because it gives us a way to graph how these transition temperatures basically gives us the equations, not that line. It gives us the equation of any line where we're in equilibrium with gas, right? Where you go with the gas out here. So it basically gives us the equation of this line and of this line. Okay, so as long as we have um, some reference point, which could be the triple point, it could be the normal boiling temperature, um, we then can calculate it at some new pressure, a new temperature, okay?